So this paper aims to illustrate one approach, a, um, a personal approach, a developing approach to conducting an archaeological an an archaeologist's survey project in an urban environment. And it does this by observing and recording a specific place repetitively over the course of a year. So death by PowerPoint briefly. Um, <coughs> the project began on the 7th of January 2015. This was the day I went back to work after a nice uh, winter break. It's got five main objectives and it's to record a tagged wall at a specific urban location. To be and for me to do that is to become immersed in the practice of engagement and I'm going to do that by disseminating the changes through a social media app. In addition to that, by using the app I can undertake engagement practice with graffiti writers and taggers and additionally engage with others who have an interest, a locus, a uh, for some reason they want to be engaged in this practice and you'll see a little bit more about what that kind of engagement is later. And then finally it's really about how I consider the agency of graffiti in this context really as disrupting archaeological time and how that affects our thinking about archaeology, the changing changes within the archaeological discipline, the changes within the archaeological community across Scotland and within the structural changes that are going on as well. So the urban environment that I focused on is at Gifford Park. It's a pedestrian-only side road in South Edinburgh. It was chosen for two specific purposes. The place was partially marginalised due to it being a gap between two tenements. And it's used to keep rubbish bins in by the local businesses. You can see the bins there pretty clearly. Um, but it was still a pedestrian throughway. Secondly, it was also a place that I often pass during my lunchtime walk around the neighbourhood to get out and get some fresh air as well. So the medium that was used to record the graffiti wall was photography. That was using my phone. Okay. And the reasons why I use the phone will come later. This method and equipment was chosen for its ability to embed the recorder, i.e. me, in the moment to get up close, but then also to capture the image and then to both reflect on it there in the moment, to look at it on the phone, and then to go back to it afterwards as well. So it was in my pocket. I didn't have to go to a database or a... Or a a laptop, I had it in my pocket, I could check it at different times and be thinking about it and be in the moment with the picture for a while. In addition to that, it would also enable me to create a record that was both instant and able to be manipulated, curated and potentially archived. So specific criteria were established to give the recording a continuity and a framework within which I could undertake the work. These included that, I would that, a, that a photograph would be taken once a week for a year from the same spot. So I took the north wall and Annie Lee Campbell, my collaborator from Historic Scotland, took the south wall. This would give us a chance to compare the photos week on week. It would also enable the archaeologist to consider the temporal dimension to this project by using weeks as the time scale, as the tempo, if you like. <coughs> In order to engage with the writers and with other interested in graffiti and archaeology, the social media app that I chose was Instagram, um, and that was for dissemination. So what I did is I set up a dedicated page on which the photographs would be posted weekly, and Annie did the same as well, so we have two pages. Um, obviously with that you have to set up a page with a hashtag, um, sorry, not a hashtag, a handle, so we've got handles, and then we created a hashtag as well, which was graffiti underscore archaeology, or already through that we disrupted that and considered graffiti without the underscore archaeology as well. So we used both. Through the graffiti archaeology project, comments, likes, followers and following are, are being recorded. So I'm taking a note of those. They're being quantified in a database in order to capture the commentary that, and changes over the course of the project. This method enabled conversations with some graffiti writers 
some of whom have written on the wall. As a result of getting likes, comments and new followers, engagement with a range of people began to increase during the course of the project year and is still increasing. These details were also recorded in the database as well. Now, where's the inspiration for this? Because obviously I didn't come up with it myself. This was the site that really sparked the idea. This is uh, Curtis Ca Cassidy Curtis's page, Graffiti Archaeology, which if you haven't seen is a fantastic piece of work. Um, and it's not live anymore, so it runs up to about 2009, but he certainly was recording for about 10 years as well. So he was recording graffiti wars. You can see the timeline down at the bottom there, and he intersplices a whole series of, of walls across the state. So what I'm doing is rather than, rather than uh, looking at it over a long period of time, I'm reducing the time, compressing it into just the year for the 52 weeks. So what I want to show over the next um, 30 slides is the, the change that has gone on across the North Wall over the 33 weeks that I've recorded so far. So far, the results indicate that changes can be registered through close observation and recording. In addition, engagement through the, social, the chosen social media app has developed conversations with people who are both engaged in graffiti at Gifford Park and others who consider graffiti and urban archaeology a topic for discussion. The project has also demonstrated that by adapting archaeological techniques, we can consider what I have called graffiti time. And finally, I hope that the paper will illustrate how archaeology can register intended and unintended consequences of graffiti's agency. So over the course of 33 weeks so far, and don't forget it's running on till the end of the year, you can see that changes have come and gone. Uh, I've got, I've bumped up to 35 photos, gathered 46 followers, I'm following 146 people. I've got 231 likes, had comments from 45 people. And the conversations are focused around three areas. People who have written on the wall, people who are liking the idea of watching the wall for a year, and people who are commenting on the range of tags of the wall. In terms of the writers, at least 16 tags were recorded on the north wall and at least 17 on the south wall. The number of changes to the graffiti on the North Wall total five events today, so five changes of the graffiti on the North Wall. Um, so that included new tags and oversprays as well, as you saw. Now, I could go into the details about beefs and about what is going on, the social and <coughs> cultural implications of the changes of the graffiti on this wall, but I think as you've noticed, there's been a, a Vesuvian intervention, frankly, on the floor, um, which I, I want to talk about a little bit more now. So, <coughs> the rubbish bins are also part of the wider context, and that's what we should always be thinking when we are considering graffiti, is the context. They're part of the wider context of the site that led to the events that took place the cataclysmic event, if you like, in July and changed the whole area. These events were off screen. They were not played out on the wall. And they took place between the local residents, businesses, Edinburgh City Council and Sustrans, the National Cycle Network organisation. At the beginning of 2015, wholly coincidentally, Edinburgh City Council passed planning consent for Gifford Park to be redeveloped as part of a wider cross-city cycling infrastructure project. As a result, in July and early August, <coughs> Gifford Park received major changes. These included the pavement was relayed with smooth tarmac, the stone bollards were removed, a cycle-friendly traffic light and crossing system has been installed, the walls have been cleaned, and a mural was painted on both sides of Gifford Park, designed by local artist Kate George. As you can see, the north wall there. So the mural painting over the graffiti walls that Annie Lee Campbell and I have been recording since the 7th of January um, was certainly an unexpected consequence. This was a major change event in the project and one which I certainly had not considered as well. 
There are four aspects of the ongoing graffiti archaeology project that I'd like to briefly discuss as these appear most pertinent within this session. Is this a good method of archaeology? Or, flip that, is this a good method of engaging with graffiti? Well, in terms of archaeology and the classic tropes of archaeology, it's time-defined, it produces specific results, and it has an instant dissemination and archiving method. It's very cheap, which sometimes archaeology isn't, compared to intrusive excavation, certainly. The engagement method is readily available and the dissemination, conversation and peer critique approach has its merits. Using Instagram could also be part of a critique of the project about whether this form of dissemination actually encourages graffiti. To that point, I've been specifically mindful of this kind of immersed position that I took and have been very careful and considerate of my language on my Instagram comments and posts. However, as Shanks and many others have reflected upon in the past, we are not passive observers, but immersed participants, and this is particularly true of this project, I think. So what about the granularity of it? So like all archaeological observations, we can critique that. This is a bit like digging a single trench into a whole city. We will only learn a defined aspect of an overall narrative, and multiple narratives as well. In the case of this graffiti wall, the narrative is ongoing, <coughs> but to date I've recorded, catalogued, interpreted and disseminated data without even finishing the project. In addition, this project has allowed us to reflect on a weekly basis, not only in observation terms, but also in methodological and interpretive process, approaches. Overall, I see this project as being slightly innovative, cost neutral, potentially, and an effective way of documenting engagement within contemporary archaeology through closely observing change over a predefined period. In addition, it's enabled me to engage with writers and interested others and has enabled me to further understand the practices of graffiti writing as an engagement with contemporary place. So to finish, the South War mural was recently tagged by OE, who was o Owen Edinburgh, which immediately raised comments on Annie's Instagram page. I think you can see that here. That immediately raised comments on Annie's Instagram page. So the temporality of the graffiti walls, even if, if disrupted by the mural painting, appears to also be sustained by the changes. Overall, the removal of the graffiti space and the gentrified mural cycleway has demonstrated the way in which graffiti is still <coughs> appropriated to sustain Cresswell's discourse of disorder. And to close. From the project recording the graffiti wall, it is clear that it was actually the bins and the result of private and municipal waste storage and removal that formed a significant influence on the decision that the area needed tidying up. You know, if you can think about it, there were only five changes in the graffiti and they were pretty subtle, small tags. But it was actually the, the overflowing of the bins and the rubbish that led on to the change. But the graffiti was always appropriated within that discussion. And it was always kind of pushed to the fore that the graffiti was making the place uncomfortable. Whereas actually it was the, the, the trafficking of the bins within this relatively confined space and they were creating it an awful lot of obstruction. So in this project at least, when we are considering the temporalities <coughs> of graffiti, we need to be mindful of the juxtaposition of rubbish, decay or ruin, which can affect perceptions of place that affect graffiti temporalities. Thank you.